Now, more details are emerging concerning the Obama administration's latest sanctions against Russia for allegedly influencing November's presidential election. The head chef at the Russian consulate in San Francisco is among those 35 Russian diplomats that were given 72 hours to leave the U.S. as suspected Russian spies. We hate to have to say goodbye to close to a dozen of our colleagues, our friends. They will fly back to Russia on December the 31st, meeting the new year while in flight. The three kids will not see Santa. They have only one day to finalize their financial affairs, terminate their apartment leases, pack their belongings, as well as to prepare for the long trip. Why did it all happen? They were qualified as intelligence operatives, bizarre and ridiculous. One of the people who was expelled has been the chef of the consulate. And Russian diplomats in America were also asked to vacate two holiday homes, according to President Obama. They were being used for intelligence-related purposes and were dubbed as spy nests by some media outlets. Uh, the retreats are located in Long Island in New, in New York, and also uh, the other one is in the state of Maryland. Well, buses with diplomatic plates believed to be carrying Russian diplomats and their families away have been seen leaving that compound in Maryland. Uh, the building itself was bought by the Soviet Union back in the 70s and can accommodate up to 40 families. It's thought that many of them were there to celebrate New Year together. Meanwhile, Russia's response came as a surprise to many as President Putin announced there wouldn't be any tit-for-tat expulsions of American diplomats. Putin's decision was praised by the incoming US President Donald Trump, tweeting that it was a great move. RT's Miguel Francis Santiago looks at the reasons why Moscow decided against retaliation. Obama's reign is coming to an end, and it seems the outgoing president is doing his level best to make as big a mess as he can for Donald Trump to clean up. But if that's how Mr. Obama wants to spend his final weeks in the office, crowning his legacy, other leaders are busy running the world. Let's take a look at the breakthrough peace deal in Syria this week, brokered by Russia, Turkey, and Iran. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is very specific about who he wanted at the peace talks. Egypt, Iraq, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and UN committee. Who is missing? That's right, the US. But it's not like the door is locked. I'd like to express hope that when Donald Trump's administration comes into office, they will also be able to join these efforts so we can work in one direction collectively. Now let's zoom in on the latest sanctions fired at Russia for its alleged US election interference. Everyone waited for a tit-for-tat, but Putin says there won't be one, while inviting U.S. diplomats' kids in Moscow to a New Year party at the Kremlin. We will not create any problems for U.S. diplomats. We will not expel anyone. We will not prevent their families and children from using their traditional leisure sites during the New Year's holidays. Moreover, I invite all children of the U.S. diplomats accredited in Russia to the New Year and Christmas children's parties in the Kremlin. Ouch! Again, seems Mr. Obama and his administration are irrelevant. And if you take a look at the official Kremlin statement, specifically at the ending... It is regrettable that the Obama administration is ending this term in this manner. Nevertheless, I offer my New Year greetings to President Obama and his family. My season's greetings also to the President-elect Donald Trump and the American people. Making it clear who he regards is now the man in charge there. Despite all that, some U.S. media outlets were quick to report that Russia had already retaliated before any official statement was made. Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman gave a strong response to the misinformation. Russia now vowing to issue its own response to U.S. sanctions and has already ordered the American school of Moscow to close. That is a lie, and there is no need to say that Moscow denied or Moscow will not. Just say it how it is. CNN and other Western media outlets basing their reporting on official U.S. government sources have spread false information.